guys, a couple of you guys I don't know. I'll probably hit you up when we're done here, but I'm Jeremy, Jeremy Robles. Um, I, only in my deep imagination do I pretend to be a data scientist. So I kind of want to share a little bit of my journey with you guys when it comes to data science and what it means to actually use TensorFlow in everyday project, projects. Um, so a little bit of background about me. I graduated from Fresno Pacific University. I uh, got my degree in business administration marketing. And then after, I'm like, eh, you know, fashion. I did that for a little while. Uh, that's too stringent and phony. And business is very stringent. And so I wanted something that was, I don't know, a little bit more advanced. So I decided that I was going to start programming. And my dream was one day I could build Skynet. So that's uh, the less malicious, like in the description, but that's my goal. And I'm, uh, with a demo that I'm going to show you guys, I'm a little bit closer and I'm really excited. Um, so in the past, uh, I liked building robots along with Corey over here. Uh, both of us, we like building robots and it's so much fun. The thing is, robots aren't very smart. And so, as you guys might know, we kind of have to help them along, give them a little nudge. And I thought, you know, hey, how hard can this whole AI thing be? Like, seriously, like, well. So then I started down this rabbit hole to teach myself what it meant to, one, be a data scientist. I didn't even know the term. It just was a cool little buzzword. AI was also a little buzzword. There's machine learning's a buzzword too, deep learning, which we'll be talking a little bit about. Um, and of course, if I say deep learning or machine learning, uh, people will have like a huge argument. They'll go back and forth. Um, so last year, around this time, I, I was lucky enough to go over to New York for this AGI conference. And I was very brave, you know, I'm in this rule of room of academics. Uh, I, I'm deciding, you know, what my question's gonna be. I wanna make a statement and just get my name out there, you know? And I got humbled right away. I asked uh, the question, like, well, how do you guys feel about deep learning? And the whole room fell silent, uh, just like it is right now. And they just all laughed after a split second because you know it's AGI, artificial general intelligence, not necessarily deep learning or machine learning. So I was a little bit of a fish out of water, but it was still so much fun to be in a room full of smart people like I am right now, um, people smarter than me. So I'm gonna talk to you guys about TensorFlow. Um, before I do that, I gotta give you a little bit of a preface because that's my speaking patterns. Um, I like to preface things. I also like to move around, bob around when I get excited. So if you see me doing that, that's probably because I am super stoked to be here. Um, so thank you, Rio, Chaba, and sir, for inviting me here. Um, so let's see what we got. How many of you guys watch Silicon Valley? Yes. I do too. How many of you guys have heard of Hot Dog Not Hot Dog? Yes. So there's a little rumor around the internet that this was basically built on top of TensorFlow. Yes, and some other cool stuff. Um, yeah, so we'll be talking about this. But in order to break the ice a little bit further, I want to, let's see if I can, play this short video. I don't know how my speakers will do. If not, I can. Can you guys hear this? I'm Emily Chang. This is Bloomberg Technology from San Francisco. In a moment, we'll be talking to Techonomy CEO David Kirkpatrick about the social media phenomenon sweeping the vegan meat industry. But first, we have seafood founder and CEO Jin Yang. Sorry, Mr. Jin, Mr. Yang? It's uh, Mr. Jin Yang. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jin Yang. You just sold your company, Seafood, to Periscope, and we're hearing the deal closed at over 15 million. Can you confirm? I am a very rich. My sources at Periscope tell me the tech is quite impressive. 
and your app uses the same machine learning to recognize if a food is a hot dog? And a not hot dog. It's a very important. It's a hot dog, not hot dog. It's technology. Excited to see it in the App Store. I'm told it's releasing today. For free? Because uh, I'm rich. Speaking of, I understand okay. investor Ehrlich Bachman left the company just before the Periscope. Okay, I'm going to stop it right there because it goes a little bit further than I wanted to share. Um, but it's very funny. I definitely suggest you guys check out that episode. Watch the whole series. It's great. It's great. Um, yes, yes. So... <laughs> So, about a week or two after the so download it now because you will have so much fun. <laughs> uh, no. Okay. So machine learning versus deep learning. This wasn't the easiest slide to come up with for me. Um, it's very easy to say, oh, TensorFlow is exclusively machine learning or TensorFlow is exclusively deep learning. And I'm sure I would love to have some debates with you guys after the fact, and we can touch on some of these points. TensorFlow mixes algorithms from both machine learning and deep learning to produce this new hot topic, hot buzzword that is TensorFlow. So with that said, you guys can look through some of this. Um, and I would also suggest checking out the why deep learning is radically different than machine learning. Um, I also plan on sharing my slides with everybody here. So there's some resources that if you have never um, ever used any type of artificial intelligence and you're curious, um, this will be a good tool for you guys. So before I go any further, how many of you guys have done some AI in the past? Or machine learning of some kind? A handful, yeah, no, a little, yeah? Okay, so yeah, I'm open to debates. Um, yeah. Okay, so what is TensorFlow? TensorFlow is magic. It is kind of the monolith that we've all been hoping for. It's very 2001 in the sense that we could definitely produce some type of HAL system uh, if we had enough programmers, and if we had enough data, which we might, and uh, there's enough uh, stuff out there for everyday people to get introduced to TensorFlow, to start using it, use it in real applications that don't just determine if something's a hot dog or not a hot dog, and move on from there. I'll go into some more applications for TensorFlow, a, little, a couple slides down the road, but yeah, so just some information for you guys. I hate reading off my slides because I'll pick out the grammar problems. Um, but yeah, TensorFlow is magic. Um, so I like to think of TensorFlow as a set of tools, algorithms, um, even in some cases models, uh, where you can use stuff that people have already produced, use it in your own application, and create something slightly different or brand new. Um, I do have a little demo later, and let me tell you guys, it, it is not my own, sadly. I found this amazing piece of software that I was super stoked to get my hands on. Luckily, somebody was kind enough to open source it, um, and I think you guys will be really excited by uh, the potential. Um, I want to use it for robot navigation. <laughs> uh, and also determining if something's a hot dog or not a hot dog. <laughs> but TensorFlow, we can think of it, and this might be another sore topic for some of you guys. TensorFlow is meant to be an end-to-end -end system, an end-to-end -end neural network that we can use to take data and run it through, train the system, and then set it on another set of data. For example, uh, there was one video that when I was doing some research, I found this video where this guy is talking, taking a, a system that could determine if something was an apple or an orange, 
and then he took, he didn't really have to change the code, he just modified it to determine if Dark Vader was in an image from Google, which is a pretty cool idea. It goes back to the reusing code, making your code dry, so it follows some of the best practices for uh, research, for application building. And also in the video they mentioned that other code frameworks that we've used have, uh, they've met some type of standard. And with TensorFlow and with machine learning, AI, this is still the Wild West. And understandably. So TensorFlow is one of those movements in order to create programming standards. And it seems like slowly the rest of the world is following in Google's patterns, which is amazing. Um, so yes, it's an end-to-end -end system. Um, you guys can ask me more about that later. I wanted to have about 10 other slides just about that. I, sadly, I don't think you guys would want to spend five hours. <laughs> Maybe on a weekend, but you know, we all like to sleep. It's a weekday. But. So, and by the way, I don't have all that many slides. I wanted to give you guys just a nice general introduction and then point you to some resources that you can work on your own. So let's envision this is the end-to-end -end system. We can see our data coming in on one side and eventually over on the right, we'll get our output of some kind. If you guys have ever expressed any type of curiosity in artificial intelligence or machine learning, this you've probably seen this 20 different times. And I, I want you to think of this in terms of uh, image processing. At least that's the way I'm looking at TensorFlow, is from the context of image processing. Even though you can use this for stock analysis, you can use it for just about anything, decision making. The other day, I'm not gonna share it with you guys, but I wrote uh, just a toy neural network to find out what I should do with my life. I, I felt like I was definitely a fortune teller or I was using an eight ball. It was kind of creepy. Um, <laughs> The results were good, but eh, it's going to take me a little bit of time. Um, so if we think about this, the first label I have there, edge detection. So let's say we take an image after we've trained a system. We take an image, we throw it through uh, the neural network. It determines any type of shapes. Maybe we, at that point, well, it'll determine shapes, edges of different um, sections of the image, so if it's a hot dog, we're going to look for general shapes, right? Um, some type of tubular structure. Um, then it'll move into some type of feature, uh, feature to feature comparison. Okay, in the past, I know that a hot dog has two ends, and it's also always somewhat uh, cylindrical, so it'll just keep progressing through the system. Um, finally, at the end, that's where it does the higher level filtering. This might not make the most sense, but this is where the most complexity happens in the algorithm or in your model, in this case. This is where you'll pick up information about um, not necessarily color, but you'll start doing more complex comparisons. I understand this is very loose, very generalized, um, but I want you guys to probe me for questions later maybe on a one-to-one -one basis. And by the way, I'm not an expert in this. Remember, I'm a business major. Business majors get as far as stats and then we quit. So that's, that's the truth. Um, but the cool thing about TensorFlow is that even though we're working with this type of um, structure, uh, Google did a lot of the legwork for us. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to be experts. We can pretend to be data scientists and get the results of a data scientist. So to me, that's super attractive because even though I do like math and I say I don't, I don't necessarily want to spend uh, another 20 hours of my day reading every single article I can online about linear algebra. That might be fun, but yeah. So another uh, option that you guys might be interested or another uh, visualization is this graph right here. So let's say we have a picture of this cute little cat. We want to determine if it's a cat or if it's not a cat or if it's something else. So we'll throw it into the input layer. That would be the base layer. 
Uh, and then from there, we'll send it through a couple different layers in our neural network. I keep using the word layer, I understand, it's kind of weird. But um, so at each different layer, we're looking for specific features, specific traits um, that we might be able to match up with um, our, our goal in mind. So, you know, do cats usually have blue eyes? And we'll, you know, the system might be, oh, I'm totally gonna open up a can of worms in logic and reasoning. But um, you, can, you could generalize, say, you know, cats have eyes. So one of these layers will determine, is there a shape of something resembling an eye? Uh, we can talk more about it. Um, so eventually, as it progresses through, you finally get your results, and then you get really happy. Um, yeah. so, so the good, the bad, and the ugly. TensorFlow is by far not perfect. Um, the good side is, is that it's open source. So instead of using this closed system like they have in the past, Google decided that they were gonna open source their machine learning, um, you know, slap a new name on it, and it, all around uh, it, there is a giant community that's starting to support it. Of course, documentation isn't the best, but there's a growing um, community and if you look on GitHub, like do a quick Google search for TensorFlow GitHub, you'll see quite a few examples that you can use. Um, at least for me, uh, the bad part was the human learning curve. It took me a while to get up to speed. How many of you guys have messed with TensorFlow or attempted? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we know Kobe's a rock star, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, it, it takes a little bit of, of time to get used to the way things are structured, to kind of pick through some of the language that they're using and formulate it in a way that you can understand yourself. Sadly, if you want to use artificial intelligence of any kind and machine learning or TensorFlow, you need to actually read for yourself. Uh, that's whenever I teach classes here at GeekWise, I actually have to tell my students, you have to read. Like, you're, you're not gonna get anywhere if you're just waiting for YouTube to hand you the answer. Sorry, but you gotta read. So it might mean that you have to pull up some of those uh, doctoral papers, and you gotta read through some of the language, you gotta understand certain things. Now, there are certain languages and certain labels that they use in TensorFlow that aren't necessarily um, clear, and you know, if you would come up to me, you know, next week and say, hey, you know, I had a problem with X, Y, Z, uh, then I could probably say, oh, you're just doing a simple correlation or you're just trying to match up your features to your labels. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it can be straightforward, but it takes a little bit of research. Um, the ugly side, and I found this out last night, <laughs> Uh, is uh, TensorFlow has a tendency to be very um, CPU or GPU intensive. So you want to be prepared. Um, my Mac can't necessarily run uh, everything I would like it to run. So, you know, that's when I have to go over to a better OS, Unix, and just brute force things. Um, so you, you have to have some background, uh, at least experience, like I don't, I'm not, uh, academically trained when it comes to computers, you at least have to have some understanding of the command line, which is super helpful. Question? Well, you just said it was highly hardware intensive, so what kind of hardware is it? Ah, so there are two, uh, two distributions, I'll call them. Um, one you can use for a CPU, one you can use for a GPU, and then there's also this rumored TPU that I haven't gotten my hands on yet. Um, but basically my Mac, it's 16 gigs RAM, 512 gigs hard drive, and I'm using about, uh, when I run this demo uh, for you guys, I'm using about, uh, I max out about seven gigs of RAM at a time. Um, amount of cores I'm using, I think I'm using about four cores to run it. So it's doing quite a bit of multi-threading, which is exciting. Um, yeah. So you would definitely want to run TensorFlow on a gaming machine 
It's not the best to run it on a Raspberry Pi, even though it's advertised that it can run on a Raspberry Pi. Toad scan. Toad scan? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have researched that for this FS this year. Not um, big, big no. Yeah. As four cores, sure, but it has a whopping gig of RAM. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, so for image processing, that's uh, the context that I'm working from. I would prefer something better than my Mac. I would prefer a gaming PC. Um, or, you know, I can just throw it on the Google Cloud and just run everything from there and have it um, magically transport back to my computer uh, to get the results. But uh, definitely they've designed TensorFlow to run on Google servers first and foremost. So that's what they really suggest. Um, I didn't really have time to develop some of the um, points I wanted to for uh, releasing a model into the wild. But, you know, if you guys want me back, then I can talk about that. Uh, Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. I, I feel like you should be up here talking. I, I, <laughs> I just meant that to be funny. I, I, uh, humor. I, I'm basically not human. I'm more machine. So this whole humor <laughs> thing. Yeah. Um, so this was another one of those slides that was kind of like, ah. I could easily spend 20 hours talking about this. So basically, I just wanted to slim it down for you guys and give you just kind of the meat and potatoes. Literally, there's two points I want to make on this slide. So uh, when it comes to your model, you are incorporating some type of learning algorithm, which is, in some cases, up to you to produce. Um, and then you also have your hypothesis test, which I would really encourage you guys, once you get these slides, to do a Google search. Or maybe somebody that feels very wise can do a Google, Google search for me. This is one of those sections where I am not the best to explain uh, the model. Uh, I think somebody that has a little bit more math background might do a better job than me. Um, but yeah, you can think of it, uh, these red sections on this little graph here, this is what your uh, producing when you're producing a model. Um, and it will vary from task to task. So if you're doing uh, image recognition or object recognition, uh, then the red sections will uh, kind of determine uh, will, what happens to your incoming data sets, if that makes sense. I realize that's still very vague and ambiguous. I'm just ambiguous, so. Uh, let me so the data sets, data sets, I, I, <laughs> so you can think of your features as the incoming input into your neural network. You can think of the labels as the uh, output. So if I'm wanting to determine if something's a hot dog or a not hot dog or an apple or an orange, then uh, the images that I put in would definitely be the features. And anything coming out would be the final label. The computer is 90% sure that this is a hot dog. And you cannot debate with the computer. Well, you can. Um, so yeah, this, this took me a little while to wrap my head around. Um, coming from a strictly web and Arduino background, you know, college, I thought I was a 
badass working with my Arduino. And, you know, come to find out later, well, the world's a lot bigger than a 32 kilobit little processor. But um, so when I first started with TensorFlow, I'm trying to fudge some SQL into my model. And I, I'm sure, you know, somebody in this room could do that. It didn't work for me. Um, I, typically, uh, Google has a specific format that they like to follow for data sets. And uh, I can provide you guys with some of that information if you're interested. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, this might be a stupid question, but do, does Google provide like predefined data sets? Like I know with Microsoft's ML, mm -hmm. they, you know, they have a whole set of data sets that you can utilize. Mm -hmm. Does, uh, since I have been exposed to this, does Google do the same? Yes. So they do that with both models and with data sets. Oh, awesome. And actually, you can go to uh, Cornell's website and you can find uh, lots and lots of data sets that you can use. I am freezing right now. Um, so yeah, you can do the standard, like if you guys have ever messed with any type of machine learning, you've probably done the handwriting example. Um, I did that, you know, it, I did it at least five times. The first three times it flew over my head. Um, but you can get uh, some, basically it's like stock data sets. Uh, where you can get people's handwritings, um, thousands of iterations of zeros and nines and whatnot. And you can eventually, uh, you can use that data to train it, TensorFlow to recognize the data sets. Google um, also provides other, um, other examples. There was one that I was messing with because I'm a robot guy, I like robots. I want to work on this whole navigation thing, you know, eventually uh, self-driving cars. So I, I, I found this example where they mapped one of the Google offices, or at least a floor of one of their buildings, all in 3D space. So you can load this up in your browser, and you can poke around with it, and that is one data set that they provide for free. Um, so you don't have to pay, and you don't have to be a researcher to get your hands on it, which is... Amazing. Now, here's another thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, you mentioned the 3D set. Have you seen out there people utilizing something like that with a VR headset? Because that's what I'm curious about, intertwining the that, two. So. That touches cool. on some stuff I work on in the middle of the night when nobody's looking. But <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <Right. laughs> um, yeah, but that's, that's one of those things that. Um, uh, that's one of those things where it's definitely the bleeding edge, and it's super exciting, and it can be just the worst headache of your life. But sure. yeah. Yeah. Um, So if I go back up to models, um, this red area, the reason why I can't explain it very well is because I like to default to the models that Google's al already provided. Um, so for most cases, unless you're trying to do um, the 3D mapping for virtual reality, uh, you might want to just default to their models that they've already produced. I believe there's something like 50 different models that you can tailor for your own needs. So yeah. Uh, so another example. Um, so th these are some of the most popular. I think I got that last one right. So yeah, you can pull up um, different measurements of irises, super popular, and it's typically people's first taste of any, anything to do with machine learning. Uh, it doesn't really, I mean, it, it illustrates, obviously, the capabilities of machine learning, but it doesn't really make things click, for me at least. Um, same with handwriting. You know, this would be like a, a final output of uh, handwriting. It's deciding, okay, you know, uh, there's a 87% probability that this is a five, or this is a zero. So this would just be some output from a neural network. I, oh. Okay. So you're probably asking, like, when's this guy going to get to the code? Because that's the real reason why I'm here. Uh, well, that's 
the real reason why I'm here too, I think. Um, so this is using um, Keras. And yeah, so basically, you can use something like this. And if you look and you see where it says deer.jpg, that's literally where you insert um, an image for Google to recognize. So you can get away with something like 15, 17, 20 lines of code to do Google-style uh, image recognition. So this is the same that if you go over to Google Photos and use some of their systems, this is literally the code that they're using for that. So this is literally all it takes to actually get your feet wet with some machine learning. Um, so what this is going to do, it's going to predict, like you can see on the last line, it's going to predict, predict the probability that this image is something that, um, or it's going to classify, basically. It's going to classify uh, what the image coming through the system is. Um, I ran this for some students, or a version of this that I coded late one night. I ran it for some students, and I just did it on the spot. You know, I uploaded a picture of myself into my system, and it came back at that I, the system was 90% sure that I was an umbrella, which you know might make sense. Um, but yeah, you know, it's it's pretty good at distinguishing types of Mexican food, which I was pretty happy about. You know, burritos versus tacos. Um, but yeah, there's some other. Other cool sections of this, and uh, I'll provide the, the slides for you guys so you'll get access to uh, some of this code, which if you have never ran this piece of code before, I really encourage you to do it. Um, this is using a Jupyter Notebook, which you know I plan on talking about a little bit later. So this is a short slide. I really do like GIFs. I call them GIFs because it's not peanut butter. Um, I like using GIFs because it gives me a chance to get a sip of water. Well, you know, you guys stare at the guy with the sunglasses. So TensorFlow, uh, these are some of the applications that I just wanted to put together a short little slide for you guys about some of the types of problems that TensorFlow excels at. So inception. Uh, image recognition. Inception is literally one of the packages that Google has developed. How many of you guys have used this before? No? Yeah. OK. A couple. Yes. I'm not the only one. Um, so object recognition, also built on top of Inception and borrowing some other pieces of code that the kind people at Google produced. Um, but TensorFlow also is really good at natural language processing. Um, which I'm also really excited about because aside from um, TensorFlow, I'm really interested in the Google Home and other you know, speaking assistants. But yeah, I geek out on this type of stuff. I'm also shivering. Uh, so where's all the math? Um, when it comes to this type of stuff, like I said, I am not the best person to speak on this. That's probably somebody else's job. It is somebody else's job. Um, so when, the cool thing, like I mentioned at least two times already, is that a lot of the math, a lot of the legwork has already been done. So we don't necessarily have to reach too far into linear regressions if we don't want to. Um, you do need to understand how your application will behave from a consumer level if you decide to build a consumer application. You know, if you're going to do stock analysis, then you might want to um, consider some statistics, business statistics in particular. Um, yeah. So if you are curious, uh, this is literally me in a math class. If you are curious as to how you can get your hands on some of the math or understand what's happening behind the hood, Check out linear regressions, vector analysis, matrix algebra, you know, all the stuff that you skipped over in pre-calculus. It becomes relevant when you start working with machine learning. Uh, so TensorFlow can do math. 
uh, and it can do quite a few things. Because it's a computation library, as I like to call it, it yes, it's machine learning, um, but I like to just think of it as the heavy lifter when it comes to math. You can do a variety of different um, operations. So if you needed to create a manual function, TensorFlow literally has a, an operator, or not an operator, a method for creating your own manual algorithm. And you can use these sections inside there, or these methods within that. So if you wanted to just add your credit card statements together and figure out how much you need to pay, you can use TensorFlow, but why would you? Um, but you, you can do uh, quite a few op cool operations with it. Let's see. So how do you get started? Um, you know, when I'm not programming, I like to think of myself as a poet. And it was really cool that uh, TensorFlow, uh, or the TensorFlow team actually produced TensorFlow for poets because it just fit right with me. Um, so you can check out TensorFlow for Poets. I have the link here. Um, it's an online code lab where you can walk through step by step. Um, there was one video that I've watched at least 50 times now where they talk about, um, uh, or the, the guy presenting says that uh, people didn't ri really like this code lab because it really didn't get into the meat and bones of TensorFlow which might be true. And if you guys have seen the video, then props to you, because it's a really good one. Um, but really what it's meant to do is just level the playing field. Kind of like what we do here at Bitwise and GeekWise, level the playing field, make sure it's accessible to everybody, information should be free, and it, yeah. So definitely check this out. Um, and like I mentioned, when you go to develop an application, just keep in mind how you want it to behave at a production level. So if you're wanting something that uh, does some complex analysis, then you might have to go back and figure out how it's going to behave later on. Um, yeah, this, if you guys don't check this out, I'm gonna feel heartbroken and yeah. Yes, totally. Uh, put on some Alanis Morissette and you know, drink my Merlot. Um, so right now, there are a variety of other languages that you can use with TensorFlow. Go being a really cool option. C++ if you feel like you're a masochist. And uh, a variety of other things. I think they're even introducing .NET support, which would be kind of interesting, but don't quote me on that. Um, but the best way that I found is with Python. And like you guys, my computer talks to me. Um, like you guys noticed earlier, uh, I had some Python code up there. If it looked completely foreign to you, um, I have some tutorials that would be useful for you. Um, but yeah, for me, myself, I use Python. And particularly uh, because I'm a little old school, I use Anaconda because there's just a variety of packages that you can use. Um, I'm, I was hoping to have a tutorial video on me actually installing Anaconda TensorFlow and getting something running, but it might be tomorrow, next week, before I can get that to you guys. But yeah, it might be beneficial. Maybe I'll just throw it up on YouTube and spam all you guys. I think that Anaconda now comes pre-installed with TensorFlow. Yes. Um, yes. It does. I found a, another channel of what? doing that. What? Repeat that, Cody. I, or I was saying I believe that Anaconda version of Python automatically comes with TensorFlow. Oh, I guess. Mm. So we can install it for mm. um, Yeah. I had some problems, and really what I, when I was downloading it a couple months back, um, I had some problems getting it up and running, but uh, I, I want to get this video in your guys' hands so that you can um, see the mistakes that I made and you can avoid them for yourselves later. Which might help you, might save you a couple hours, you know, five minutes at least. 
So um, really what Google's trying to push when it comes to developing with uh, TensorFlow is Docker, which makes sense. Just like other software development, your code should be replicatable. Repli I'm not a linguist. Um, it should, you should be able to reproduce it on anybody's computer, ideally, as long as they meet specific criteria. Um, so yes, um, I use the Jupyter Notebook because I'm old school like that. And just as an example, you know, you can, I don't even know what to call Jupyter now. Is it IPython? Is it not? Is it its own entity? What are they doing? Why did they do that? That's my whole mental thought process when it comes to this. But um, there's quite a few resources out there that you guys can use. Um, I'm not expecting you guys to read all this. I would have a heart attack. Uh, I prefer four line stanzas. So it's also crucially important that if you're like me and you're starting out with machine learning for the first time, that you take the time and you look at other people's code. I mean, that's why we have GitHub and Google, right? So uh, I have a couple examples here. So object detection and just image classification. These might seem like simple, arbitrary examples, but they're really not. And hopefully you guys will see in a second how powerful it can really be, you know, if my computer still likes me. Um, I kind of bash on it all the time, literally. <laughs> so uh, now I want to show you guys the demo. This is literally me last night making sure that my system still worked. And a couple of you guys seen this. And yes, it works. Do I need to zoom in? It is 90% sure that I'm a person. And it's, yeah, it's 87% sure that that's my cell phone. And it is. Um, there's also some uh, other cool things that it could do. I don't have the pictures up here, but I plan on having you guys interact with the system, which would be fun. It could determine scissors. It pretty much thought all my hammers in my house were baseball bats or toothbrushes. So you know, there's still some work that it could do. But yeah, let me, let me slide over. So I have one example here ready to go. So don't mind all the gobbledygook up there. Um, that's me exiting the program. Um, but down here, you guys might not be able to see this last line. I'm literally just running my TensorFlow scripts. I'm passing in a couple of parameters, how big I want my video box to be. This is real-time video processing. So let me, I might need some volunteers. So let me get things a little situated. I'm going to increase the number of layers in my system. Uh, no. What did I do? Let me try this again. See, this is what I get for bad mouthing my computer. So I had high hopes for this. I had very high hopes. But I have the links in the slides for you guys. <laughs> yeah. So let's see.
Yeah. All right. I don't really want to fiddle with it too much because it's a little embarrassing being up here in front of all you smart people. Um, so yeah. Dude. Huh? I know. Yeah. Yeah. But this worked. Yeah. This worked this morning. So yes, I'll have to leave the you guys with this. This is technically a video feed that I managed to screenshot while I'm holding my phone and awkwardly pushing Command Shift 3 and then cropping later. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah. So do you guys have questions? Yes. Yes. So this is literally straight from GitHub, uh, installed dependencies on my computer, and just ran it. You know. Um, I do want to show you guys something that I'm working on currently, aside from virtual reality 3D space. start with the training data and your model to, to learn uh, what it needs to learn. And uh, it's very advisable to start with an already trained model. And then you can uh, train that model more. Let's, let's imagine a baby. The baby can already uh, recognize certain things, but you want to teach the baby specifically to recognize mm. scissors and knives. So the baby can avoid it. Mm -hmm. And then the, the Google data set, what he grabs, that's generic. So the baby kind of knows everything, but not necessarily certain. And then you can go on and teach more, 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 and show a lot of scissors and not scissors, mm -hmm. and tell the baby that this is not a scissor, this is a scissor, and you do that again and again, the baby is going to learn it. So that's what he does. He, he takes this existing one, takes the existing one and uh, specializes it to his uh, purposes further. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's one very common technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you guys are interested in using some models, um, Google provides .pd files, which are frozen models. This, this would make sense um, once you pull up some of the documentation. Um, so you can clone some of these frozen models um, literally copy and paste them into your code base and then run it and try different data sets. And then you can try something like this. Now, this hasn't worked completely well for me. Sound isn't really necessary for this. Actually, the, the music's a little bit annoying. Um, so this is using TensorFlow Inception, the current version, and it's also using ROS, which is, I'm a ROS fanboy. Um, so, you know, Ubuntu, like the world should be. Um, so they're SSHing into their ro robot, Kabuki. Um, that's literally the Japanese robot that you can ship over if you have enough money. Um, I should have sped this up for you guys. So some of this I understand. Uh, this is beyond the scope of um, GDG, but there's some cool results with time. I just really like seeing terminals. So the robot is literally, like the title says, it's K 
capturing different images. It's doing, uh, I forget the exact number per second, but it's capturing images from uh, 360 degrees. It's mapping this in uh, memory, and then it's going to be able to run TensorFlow to recognize the objects. So if you're wondering what Skynet looks like, it's this. So, yeah. Um, I don't know how much of terminals you guys want to see. Well, well, question. While you're working on Skynet, have you warned Kim Jong un that he will be annihilated yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, North Korea. <laughs> uh, no, uh, just talking to myself. Oh, North Korea. Yeah. I. Well, I haven't seen the least that he's identified the backpack, the water bottle. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes. So using pairing something like TensorFlow with another open source software like uh, ROS, you're able to rendezvous with your target. You're able to uh, move in. Uh, you know, if this thing had an arm, I'm sure it could grab it, you know, if somebody coded that. Um, the real question is, is is Google aware that this robot is connected to their system or not? That's a question I kind of wanted to pose for you guys. So. Is Google aware in the sense that they, they can ping it, or aware in the sense that they saw the code? Aware that they saw the code, aware that um, the system is, is or it did at one point interact with Google servers? What's really happening behind the oh, scenes of TensorFlow? That's a question that I'm still asking myself, and I would encourage you guys to consider. Because if you're doing stock analysis, do you really want Google aware of your finances? No. Yeah. So yeah, thank you guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have any other questions for me? Like, do you really want this uh, installation video that I keep promoting? Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so yeah. Ah. Is there something you can tell us? I mean, I know you're into robots. Mm -hmm. So that whole demo you just showed us, like, is that something you're trying to recreate? Yes, yes. Um, really what I want to do, I figure, you know, we've pretty much built uh, a formulation of Star Trek here. Now it's time that we have data. And we have R2-D2 and we have C-3PO here in Bitwise. So really what I want to do is incorporate um, some type of autonomous system, well, you know, with Corey's help and it builds uh, a system that could navigate the halls around here, that can bring me coffee from the cafe and not fall over when it's going up the stairs. That's, that's really what I want. Um, so TensorFlow is a giant piece of that, as well as a couple other AI frameworks, OpenAI, OpenCog, uh, a couple others, and keeping it everything open source because I want to be able to share everything that I produce with you guys so then hopefully you can make the software better and together we can all have smart assistant slaves. Yeah. That, yeah. That's really what I want. Right. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. Hey, I did I don't mean to <laughs>